Welcome. Today is Tuesday. It is June the 28th, and today is the feast day of St. Irenaeus. Uh, born in Smyrna in Asia Minor, Irenaeus was a really early missionary to the city of um, Ladunum, or Lyons, in Gaul, succeeding the mysterious uh, Pantheus as the second bishop of Lyons, he defended the church against the Gnostic heresies. The Gnostic envisioned a dialistic inversion uh, ruled by other um, good spirits and an evil force responsible for the creation of matter. Against this, Irenaeus proclaimed the Christian God who holds all things in being and gives being to all Creatures. Through his thorough ref, uh, refutation of the Gnostic claims, Irenaeus emerged as the first great church theologian who created systematic theology. And so this um, statement actually came from Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, and we find that Irenaeus died in the year 202. So we take an opportunity to remember St. Irenaeus today as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who called the bishop St. Irenaeus to confirm true doctrine and the peace of the church, grant, we pray, that through his intercession, that being renewed in faith and charity, we may always be intent on fostering unity and Concord, Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So today we're looking at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. And by calming the storm, Jesus demonstrates his power over nature. The disciples all the more wondered about the mystery of his person. So let us listen as Matthew explains the event. As Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him. Suddenly a violent storm came up on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by waves, but he was asleep. They came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you terrified, O you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. The men were amazed and said, What sort of man is this, whom even the winds and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Do you know anybody who can sleep through anything? Well, I'm one of those. (laughs) In fact, sometimes Monsignor Dryling gets very upset at me because if we're on a plane together going somewhere, um, I'm asleep before the wheels even leave the ground. And um, it's he for him, it's a little hard to get to sleep. And oftentimes I don't even wake up till they start serving the food just because I can smell it. Um, but, you know, there are p- great people who could sleep through anything. Even Napoleon um, slept um, from um, a raging battle that was all around him. So one young boy slept through the sinking of the Titanic. Another man slept through a plane crash, waking up to find himself battered but alive in the woods. And in today's gospel reading, we have the most famous example of all. Jesus sleeps while a storm crashes into his boat, and his apostles are crying out, Save us! Save us! You know, we know, you and I, that Jesus' days were very long, so he was probably extremely tired but there's certainly more to do than that and so this is the only gospel account that you and i have of jesus being asleep surely matthew is including it to make a point and that is god isn't worried about the things that worry us (coughs) but god is there and he um, is with us on the journey and so he takes an opportunity to be with us he is calm he's present he's um, mild and he will rebuke the wind and the sea 
and everything will become calm again. And so there may be times in our lives when we cry out to God and ask the Lord, don't you care what's happening to me? What we perceive as his absence isn't that at all. However, he is aware of every situation in our lives. Um, he's aware of our daily troubles, anxieties, fears, and stresses. And uh, so he's there uh, to assist us in every need. So we can cry out. In fact, even um, on the, um, the tenth Sunday of Ordinary Time, uh, we heard how Elijah was crying out to God, save this boy. How can you take this son of this woman um, who's given me hospitality? But if you read carefully um, how many times Isaiah turned to the Lord asking him to bring life back into this child, um, Isaiah becomes calm and he becomes recollected um, in that he now begins to really, by the time he finishes, he trusts in God. He leaves it in God's hands. And finally, that's when God answers. And I think that happens to us. <coughs> it's when God answers us. So um, we have to realize for ourselves is we, we need to let go. And maybe letting go is letting go of control mm -hmm. and allowing God to be in control. And then he, because we've let go, he will take over and he will do the best for us at that particular time and what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably the hardest um, event in all of our lives is letting go and letting God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've heard that over and over and again by many people, and that's become a, a favorite line for me, let go and let God. Let God, yeah. There's another camp of people on the other extreme who who just say, oh, God will take care of me, and they do nothing. They're very passive. And that that is, to me, just as much of a problem as a person who has so much control they can't let go and let God. Mm -hmm. Because they're sitting around saying, okay, you know, you, you, if you do what you want me to do, you'll take care of it. Well, then they do nothing. It's like the man who sits on top of his roof because there's a flood going by and, and the helicopter comes by, a boat comes by, all of these things come by offering him. to offering him help to get him off of the roof of his house so he doesn't drown. But he says, oh, no, no, God's got this covered for me. And eventually he dies because the waters come up above his head. And first question he asks the Lord is, why didn't you save me? He goes, I did. I sent you a boat. I sent That's you a fun. helicopter. I sent you all those things. I did help you. So, you know, so there's like finding that balance because we do need to be really aware of how, what is our faith life like? How much faith do we have? And is there a part of us that says, oh, I don't know if I can give control up. I have to let, hang on to that part. You know, and I, I think that that is really important for us to understand that um, uh, it's more important for us, I think, to give up some control um, so that um, God has the initial um, hands on the wheel, as it were, mm -hmm. instead of us um, just totally letting go. I think God blesses us in very many ways um, because we are with him. It's almost like it's a together unit. Mm -hmm. I'm with him and mm -hmm. he's with me. So we're doing this together. Right. It's like a dance. It's well choreo <coughs> choreographed, right. you know. Yes. And so I think that when it's like that, then there seems to be great success mm -hmm. uh, because it is God who fills. And we never know exactly the way he's going to fulfill mm -hmm. um, our prayer, but we know he's going to fulfill it. And so it's trusting enough that God is not able, but will choose yes. the best for all parties involved. So take an opportunity, let go, and let God. Bye-bye. Goodbye.